former President Trump will appear on CNN next Wednesday as part of a New Hampshire town hall moderated by Caitlin Collins. Trump will take questions from Republican primary voters. In the Granite State, it's his first appearance on CNN since 2016. Now the announcement has some liberals up in arms. MSNBC's Mehdi Hassan tweeted, wow, they're giving a live primetime platform to an indicted insurrection inciter who also incited violence against their network. I was asked multiple times on my recent book tour whether the U.S. media had learned lessons from 2016 and 2020. Clearly, some in our media have not. Commentator Keith Olbermann posted this video to his Twitter account. The transformation of CNN into a journalistic whorehouse is now complete. Network President Chris Lick not only hands Trump a free hour of live propaganda dressed up as a town hall, but the only questions will come from voters in the New Hampshire Republican primary, the ones who believe Trump won the election. Thank you, production team, for finding us that clip. That was wonderfully entertaining. Uh, Again, this is, the, this is the narrative I keep returning to, but these are the supposedly made, uh, guardians of democracy, uh, consider themselves, people like Mehdi Hassan, people like Keith Olbermann, um, and their impulse is don't let the former president, who might again be president, um, a major political figure, a political figure that millions of people support and have voted for, from being interviewed on television. Like, that is, that is what appeals to them. Is, and this totally misguided idea that you can't, that, that if they shut him up, that if CNN doesn't platform him, platform him that's it, he can't get his, his message out. It, that it's, like, that's so stupid. Um, I, I don't understand it at all. Um, I, 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 so obviously CNN should do this, I think, from my point of view. Uh, it, it's, it's funny given how there are people on CNN itself who feel the same way in other contexts, like, oh, it's so irresponsible to platform Trumpism or, you know, normalizing Trump. But, of course, they want to actually make money, so then they're going to turn around and do that. Now, again, I, th I think they should obviously do interviews to town halls with the, the major political figure who is likely to be the Republican nominee again and possibly, I wouldn't bet on it, but possibly the president again. Uh, what do you think? I think it's absurd to be this upset, and I see liberals do it all the time, this upset that Donald Trump is getting airtime on CNN, when CNN will be like, here's Henry Kissinger on what's going on in China right now. It's like you're having on someone who is a, a war criminal, who many people across the globe are very upset with the, the foreign policy we've had with Henry Kissinger abroad, with bombing Cambodia more than the, all of the bombs dropped total in World War II. It's like, where do we draw the line? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. There needs to be some kind of consistency with when we're outraged. It's not up to CNN to indict President Trump. Where was the heat when Merrick Garland could have brought him in on charges? Like, if you believe Donald Trump is criminal, which many people do, if you believe he is guilty of inciting an insurrection, with, which many people do, be critical of the Biden administration and what Merrick Garland failed to do. And then as soon as Trump said, I'm running for president, Merrick Garland was like, well, now it would be political if I did anything, you, so I'm going to dip. Your point about Kissinger is very well taken. Uh, you know, James Clapper gets interviewed on, on progressive cable news channels all the time, someone who admitted, or uh, who, who is an admitted liar about uh, the extent of the, well, I, I guess he didn't admit it, he was forced to concede it after it became public knowledge that we, uh, the U.S. government was engaged in exactly the kind of vast surveillance that intelligence officials had always I insisted that they were not doing. Um, uh, you know, peop uh, uh, John Bolton, a popular, mm -hmm. now you know, he's, a, he's a resistance figure because he was let go by Trump and he hates Trump. You know, someone who has advocated for war with every other country virtually, with North Korea, with Iran, uh, et cetera, we, you know, millions and millions of people would die if his policies were implemented. Thank, some of them were implemented. Thank God more of them have not been implemented. But that's all fine. That's all fine. I would go as far as to say it's just like lazy political commentary to say like orange man bad, how dare you give him a platform, and to ignore all of these other figures yeah. that are villains globally that are just regular uh, commentators he, on he, news. He has a platform. He has a platform. He was the former president. He can speak 
I, we hear you can't stop people from learning what Trump has to say. You just, like it's impossible. Um, it, you, you all you can do is is really like Streisand effect him, I guess, where like he gets suppressed in some small way, and then it generates further outrage that you're trying to suppress him. I, I think this happened with like the New York Post uh, laptop story. It, it's happened a hundred times. But this isn't some you know, really, really obscure figure who, okay, no one will find out what he knows and thinks if you don't do this interview with him. It's Trump. It, it's, he's, he's, he's one of the most well-known political figures, most well-exposed political figures in the history of all of time. Mm -hmm. For a lot of regular voters, Robbie, though, all they do is they turn on cable news. They don't yeah. go and seek out his content yeah. on the interweb. So that might be a little bit difficult for many people. It would be fair for CNN to also have a debate between, like, RFK, Marianne, and, and Biden. I would mm -hmm. like to see CNN do that That'd as be well. fantastic. I would love to see that. Um, of course, you know, what we talked about this yesterday, which I can't remember which channel it was. Was it... CBS, NBC, ABC, one of them, uh, we should Google it, maybe the producers want to tell me if they're looking, uh, the channel that uh, didn't um, uh, show the entire RFK Jr. debate, mm. or, uh, not debate, uh, interview, CBS, CBS it was CBS, yeah. uh, they, you know, they determined part of it, oh, this is, you can't possibly hear this part, what he has to say about vaccines. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they do the same, if CNN does the same for this Trump, uh, you know, if, if, if he gets asked about the 2020 election and start saying things like starts claiming that he won when he didn't. Whether they will uh, whether they will blur that. I don't know how they'll handle that. Um, uh, some you you have to handle it. You have to you actually do have to post disclaimers if you want to post such content on social media because the social media companies have their own policies. I don't agree with them, but we obviously have to follow them if we're going to be successful in social media. But it will be interesting to see if they go that route as well. It's just going to make mainstream media and the establishment political parties more unpopular among the American people because how patronizing and belittling is it for them to say, we don't believe you can parse this information for yourself and therefore we will censor it for you. Like it makes sense, I think, for social media companies to say, you know, this is founded to not be true and some data that we have and here's the link eh. to that data. Like I, I'm for that. I'm not for that. I know you're not, Robbie. Well, it's just they've gotten it wrong so many times. I mean, I, yeah. we, we've seen this, uh, I mean, Rising was affected by this a year ago. Uh, they, mm -hmm. uh, it was wrongly alleged that we had spread the election misinformation. Um, a couple times, I've this content uh, fact checked on Facebook um, that the fact checkers are, I mean, they're just activist organizations. They don't have any special expertise. Uh, I, I think, honestly, the, the fact checking mechanism I appreciate the most on social media is actually the one on Twitter, despite all the other issues going on with Twitter right now, is the community notes. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed those? Yes. Uh, they're just, uh, it's like Wikipedia. Kind of anyone can do it, and then you can, you can, you can edit the note, and you can edit the edit of the note, and, you, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the public square. It's people, you know, not just experts, not just fact checkers, but anyone can chime in and say, well, here's why that's wrong. Here's an article. And then they say, actually, that's wrong. And uh, I think that generally is more likely. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, community-derived uh, fact checking is better than someone who has an ideolog ideological agenda coming in and saying, no, I, this, is, you know, this is wrong. This has been settled. Could it be argued, Robbie, that, that the herd mentality also has its own bias based off of all of the information that's been fed to people throughout their entire lives getting public education from the American government? Well, maybe, but, you know, I tend to think, uh, you know, it's the wisdom of crowds sort of thing that, hmm. uh, that if you have a, you know, a bunch of viewpoints, um, you're more likely to, I mean, this is the idea behind free speech, right? We let everybody talk and express their view and try to persuade and hopefully the the correct opinion is the one, the, the, the best supported opinion is the one that wins out. Obviously, that's a little you know, naive and starry-eyed, and it doesn't always work that way. But, but the alternative, just trusting it to the experts, you know, ignore, ha, I think has ignored their blind spots and their preconceived notions about things and all of that. I think my happy meet in the middle point is so many experts have not even put any effort into making their research and what they publish and what they have to tell people accessible to anybody except for themselves and the peers that review their papers. Mm -hmm. And 
perhaps if they did a better job of that and were vested in that, this would go differently. But instead, we have these experts who maybe review this content and they get linked and posted in the, in the disclaimers, and people can't really parse that language. So it makes it difficult for herd mentality to be based in any science when the research has been made inaccessible. Mm. All right, well, we will have more rising right after this.